Good morning. Good morning. So my fib was that I'm a lifelong disciple, but uh, it might be a little true because uh, I feel quite at home this morning. So thank you so much for welcoming me uh, this morning to share a brief reflection. I always chuckle whenever anyone asks me to be brief because I've been a preacher for far too long to know what that means anymore. But uh, I will try. Since there's food on the line, Bishop <laughs> knows what she's doing. I start with a question this morning. What did 1848, 1863, and 1963 all have in common? They are years when bold people rose up and took a stand for unity among the human race. Just in case you didn't know, in 1848, just down the road from my hometown in Seneca Falls, New York, a lady named Susan B. Anthony took a stand and began her pursuit of women's rights and equality. She had spunk, and she's noted as saying, it was we the people, not we the white male citizens, nor yet the male citizens, but we the whole people who formed the union. And we formed it not to give blessing of liberty, but to secure them, not for the half of ourselves or the half of our posterity, but to the whole people, women as well as men. Susan B. Anthony, she had a dream that took shape in 1920 when the Susan B. Anthony Amendment was passed so that women had the right to vote. In 1863, it was another year that a person a bold person took a stand for unity among the human race. His name was Frederick Douglass. And in 1863, at the age of 45, he became the first African American to be invited to the White House. He went there to speak to the president, President Lincoln, about equal pay for black soldiers. He took a stand for unity and equality of human beings. He urged that where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, and where any one class is made to feel that society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, and degrade them, neither person nor property will be safe. In 1865, Douglas saw the movement towards human equality begin when slavery was officially abolished. Then 100 years later, standing at the Lincoln Memorial in the shadow of the great emancipator, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood before a crowd to offer a testimony to a rampant injustice that persisted in that day and in this. He spoke in a tone of hope that many of us have become all too familiar with and quite frankly comfortable with when he said those immortal words, I have a dream. It would be easy to look around the world today and fall into the temptation of despair in the belief that these giants on whose shoulders we stand all work for nothing. However, we must not forget the words of Dr. King. He said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. His message was simple that our stand for unity must never yield to the lowest common denominator. We must never give ground to those who would keep our world, our nation, our communities, our congregations divided. We must always press on, always take a stand, and always continue to strive towards unity and equality. These dreamers are not the first of their kind. In fact, in John chapter 17, Jesus yes. dreams too. He prays. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you and I, you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Just turn to your neighbor real quick and say complete unity. Complete. Not partial unity, Not part. but complete. complete. 
Then the world will know that you sent me and you have loved them as you have loved me. So today in 2023, Dr. King's dream and Jesus's prayer have yet to be realized. The spirit of Douglas and Anthony has yet to be fully grasped. We as a nation remain caught up in the struggle to embody the concept of unity that the words of our founding fathers, we the people, promised. Today we are reminded to keep on going. And I don't stand up here this morning to tell us or to pretend like I have the answer to how that's supposed to go. But rather, some friendly advice to get us on our way. The advice is simple. How do we get to grasp the dream of unity? We live in a world that tells us we have to tolerate things. I'm afraid Jesus didn't die on a cross for you and I to tolerate each other. Amen. If you look at the definition of tolerate, it means to allow to exist. Really? King stood on Lincoln Memorial. Jesus died on the cross. People take stands every day so that we can allow each other to exist. I propose this. That if we are to grasp this call to unity, if we are to move closer in our generation so that our children don't face the same things that we've had to face, then I propose we stop tolerating each other. I propose that we stop buying what society is selling. I, suppose, I propose that we move a little closer that instead of tolerating each other, that we fueled by the hope of a vision of unity, stirred by a faith that is deep and propelled by the love of Christ, I propose that we stop tolerating each other and begin to lean in to understand each other. I propose that it is totally acceptable for two people to come from different places to disagree and to still be called children of God, yes. created in that image. I propose that even after a conversation, we can still disagree with each other and we can still love each other. But by leaning in and trying to understand each other, Doing the hard work of understanding. Toleration's easy. Understanding's hard. By doing the hard work of understanding, you and I have the ability today, in this generation, in the now, to take one step closer to Jesus' prayer, to King's dream, complete unity. I pray it would be so in your life and in mine. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend.